If you are doing a research project and want to use the internet to track down sources, you already know that finding sources is easy, but finding good sources on the open web can be like searching for stars in a cloudy night sky. When you do research on the open web, it is your job to make sure you find quality sources. To determine if a source can be used in your research, use the CRAAP test. The acronym CRAAP stands for Currency, Relevance, Authority, Accuracy, and pur Purpose. Let's go through each of the letters and delve into the key criteria that separate a bad source from a good research source. Currency refers to the date the information was published. Your topic may not require up-to-date information. For example, if you are researching symbolism in a novel or the biography of Picasso, you may have less need of updated materials. Regardless, you should always look for sites that are current in the sense that they are maintained and include updated information. Good articles will have the date in a prominent location, most often at the top under the title. Note, copyright date is not the date the site was last updated. This is especially important to know when you are putting together your citations. Finally, what has changed in the world since the content was published? If you're doing a project on GMOs, you'll want to make sure to look for only the most recently updated articles, since new research in this field is being unearthed all the time. If you are doing research on the causes of the 1918 influenza epidemic, you may be surprised to find that there have been recent discoveries in this area. The same can be said for the life of Picasso. Relevance indicates that the source not only fits with your topic and level of education, but that it also covers your topic in depth. A website that just dips the surface of a topic gives you the bare minimum of information. You'll want to locate articles that really dive deep into your topic. This is the part of the crap test that sites often fail because they provide a summary rather than an insightful focused study or analysis of the topic. If you need more information than your web search provides, why not try using a school database? Authority is all about the parties responsible for the content you want to cite. Does the author of the article or the organization responsible for the site have the credentials or bona fides to write authoritatively about your topic? Google AI overviews are not a credible source because AI has no authority. The same goes for using ChatGPT or another AI machine to locate reliable sources, by the way. Please remember that while this seems like a way to cut out the crap test, AI is not good at the crap test. It may provide a list of quote unquote credible sources, but some of these may only exist as a result of a hallucination. Authority is also where Wikipedia as a source fails, because each article has lots of contributors and you can't always verify the contributors' credentials. It is your job to cross-reference authors and organizations to make sure they are legitimate. Don't rely on author biographies produced by the original site. A Google search is often adequate to determine if an author or organization is authoritative enough for your research purposes. With web sources, accuracy is probably the most important part of the craft test. You need to find content that you can back up. Cross-reference your information with other research you've done. If you're finding it hard to make connections to your other research, you may want to find a better site. Sources that pass this part of the crap test with flying colors are those that cite their sources. This includes citing sources for images, as well as providing a list of references. Blue links that take you to an original source, not just a definition, can also be counted as references. If you find an open web source with a reference list or good blue links, you've struck gold. You now have, have even more sources that you can mine for information on your topic. Just be sure to do the crap test on them too. Discerning the purpose of a website is the last part of the crap test. Is the content on the website educational? Are the claims the author or organization makes supported by evidence? This is where blogs often fail because they tend to present biased or opinionated claims. Are you being bombarded with ads and pop-ups? Chances are the organization hosting the information is trying to make some money. You should rethink the value of the site or try to locate the article in a scholarly source like a school database. 
Finally, be careful about sites that spread misinformation. You may have already come across fake or joke news sites. It's harder to spot a site that's misleading you with false information. These sites often look legitimate, but cross-checking with your other research should help you determine if the content is fact or fiction. One way to avoid landing on this kind of content is doing a site search for .edu or .gov sources. By approaching internet research with the CRAAP test as an evaluation tool, you will not only find quality sources, you'll show your teachers that you have done quality research. Your hard work will give you an edge here at Lindbrook and beyond. For more research help, feel free to check out the listed resources. Databases provide scholarly, in-depth articles and eBooks that don't require vetting with the CRAAP test. For help with documentation, check out Purdue University's Online Writing Lab, or OWL. Finally, your friendly neighborhood librarian has put together some research extras that may help you. The LHS Library Research Site and the LHS Library YouTube channel with video tutorials on accessing books and databases. And as always, feel free to drop in at the library or email Mrs. Ashworth if you need extra help. Good luck on your research.